is. Wow! What a week. What a week. Politics. Politics. <laughs> Welcome back to Wow What a Week, part of the Africa Podcast Network. You can reach us at wow, W A W, at AfricaPodcastNetwork.com. And please don't forget, one randomly selected YouTube subscriber will win a cabin for two on our O Ship cruise, setting sail in December, when it will be announced on Friday the 3rd. Flights to Durban not included. We're coming to you from Amped Studios, downtown Johannesburg. So, the world of politics can be a shadowy world of obfuscation. So how about we help you try and make your way through the tricks and the tricksters? Here to assist make a meal of the madness and hopefully digest them. A former freedom fighter. Word is that he used to assemble an AK-47 in less than 20 seconds. While under fire, blindfolded, with both hands tied behind his back. A diplomat turned political and also a fellow divorcee. Make some noise for Butsang Mudimuwame Muilo. Wow. What's up, well, brother? What an introduction. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, I'm sitting here and thinking, to be exact, it was in 12 seconds. Was it 12 seconds? 12, you said less than 20 seconds, you're correct. Oh, so you're going to show off to and be, have to it. Be exact, it was 12. I don't know if I can still do it. Uh, but yeah, those were, those were difficult times. In fact, just before we talk about uh, Wow What A Week politics, take us back to that era um, of your life. Uh, look, uh, it's a long story, but I'll try and be short. Um, yes. I always say thanks to, you know, none other than General Bontolomism. Actually, yes. I, was, I was a youth or student activist under the Pan-African Student Organization. Mm. And uh, sometimes in the in the late eighties, there was a call after Paso Paso was formed yes. uh, for the ranks and to go in inverted commas yes. for you know a workshop or a conference in the Eastern Cape. Yes. And 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 guess what? Uh, that was the last time my family saw me going to the Eastern Cape for a Paso conference, and we end up actually in the Trans Cape Defence Force. Oh wow! Uh, a military camp, and and you know to cut the long story short, Banjo Lomisa, you know, created a way for us out of the Trans Cape into Lesotho, mm. into Eswatini, via Mozambique, into 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 uh, Harare, into Zimbabwe. Yes. And then we had a crash course military training in yes. what is known today as the Savania Motupeng uh, Military Academy mm. in, in Arusha, Tanzania. And uh, coming back home, it's also... So, so how old are you uh, at, the, at this time? I was very young. I was actually 16 years of age and doing standard nine. Oh, I actually wow. did not write my standard nine exam that year. Yes, sir. Uh, because I was outside the country. Mm. And uh, coming back home, uh, I had to come back via Botswana. And why Botswana? Because I have family in Botswana. Ah, yes. And then I... Uh, so hiding in plain sight. Uh, hiding in plain sight. But also the other issues that there was still Botswana at that time, so... One way or the other, my father, who is a pastor mm. and a Pan Africanist of note, had organized with people in the Northwest, uh, where we originate from, uh, sure. uh, to, to get me Lekwalo Lamu Sipili. And that's how I managed to come. A, a, tra a travel letter. Yes. yes. So, uh, but uh, look, I, I think I was naughty. I, you know, mm. Like any other young star sure. exposed to guns and, and so forth, and came back into a country. I don't want to talk about military operations that happen in the country. The truth and reconciliation condition mm, is over. Mm. But uh, when I look back today and I read my bio own biography at times mm. to say, did I really do that? Did I really go through that? Did you, did you testify at the TRC? No, I don't. I, I will not. I refused, actually. Mm. Why, why did you refuse? We were, we were represented as mm. the Pan Africanist or APLA forces by the former commander of operations. And that little pump at Lele. Sure. And, and he actually ha went there to rebel, if you recall what, what transpired. Yes, yes, but yes. At the time the TRC came up, most of Azanyu and Apla Force were against that whole process. Mm. It was more fast, mm. and we thought, no, no, this is not going to resolve problems and expose us because we still believe in operations even sure. after that. Do you believe you are vindicated given that the TRC has happened? Um, there's a list of people that need to account that still hasn't accounted. I, I must say I'm very proud to have been a, a Pan-Africanist. I'm very proud to have refused to cooperate with the TRC. Sure. Uh, uh, because it has come out clearer and clearer here and here 
that it actually focused mainly mm. on the liberation movement freedom fighters mm. than of the apartheid regime, yes. you know, murderers and all that. Mm. So, so some so, people were treated with kids' gloves. It, it, it was, they tried so hard to make it a fair process, but to be honest, it was not just, it was not a fair process. Is, is that why some people believe that a day of reconciliation itself is a farce? Because you're reconciling with people that, you're reconciling with no one else, actually. Because uh, you're the only one at the party. If me and you we are in dispute, we yeah. have to both be on the same level, reconcile, and agree that that's what we both want. Yes. So you can't uh, allow a person who was a victim to want to reconcile while the perpetrator mm. you know, uh, uh, there does not come to table. So a story for another day. Before we jump into the week, is pan-Africanism dead? Well, uh, I always tell people you must differentiate between Pan-Africanism and the organizations themselves. There's a lot of Pan-Africanist organizations. Yes. Pan-Africanism will not die. For as mm. long as African people are alive, mm. Pan-Africanism will not die. It's a, it's a lifetime philosophy. It's what we live in. And, and you see it mushrooming up in the continent on a regular basis. So but, it will not die. But how do we turn it into every family on the continent must at the very least talk about it? that the kids must know about it, that the kids must take pride in the Africanism. Well, as Sobukwe and Biko lately said, you yeah. know, after, after Sobukwe, uh, we have to do it ourselves. We, you know, if we are not going to change the education system in mm. the country to start teaching Pan-Africanism sure. in our schools from primary level, mm. to start it in our own homes, mm. talk to our children in a Pan-Africanist language, explain to them who was Sobukwe, who was Biko, who was Lumumba, what did they stand for? That's what we should do as African people. Let it start at home. Why is there not a handbook, Pan-Africanism for kids, that explains it at that level? Because surely we are also letting our own kids down. Maybe. Because we have pan-Africanists who are moneyed, but are not a part of, how do we spread this to the kids? Well, fresh, maybe me and you, we should look at that option of creating a dummy book for kids and for pan-Africanism. But le let us be honest, you must look how imperialists uh, uh, work. Mm. Uh, anything that smells pan-Africanism, it gets destroyed. Yes, so, and demonized. So, and, and demonized. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I think they will stand up and, and pump money into that whole project to make sure that people do not learn anything about Pan-Africanism. I'll make an example. A few years back, when well, my, my middle son was at uh, grade five, mm. and I looked at their history books, and I actually nearly taught you know, that, that whole page where they describe who Sobukwe was in the sure. current history books that our children are, are learning. It is under, under a black government? Un, 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 well, supposedly a black government. Mm. I don't know if we have a black government, but... Uh, story for another day. It's a story for another day. <laughs> Okay, we are hanging out uh, with our politics um, analyst, Botsang uh, Mudimuwame Muilwa. Thanks for joining us if you've just jumped in. Let's jump into, wow, what a week. Uh, the budget speech, almost a third of a trillion rand going towards state-owned entities. What are we not learning? Well, uh, 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 Fred, let me, let me say to you, number one, we have a very big budget in South Africa. That, that's a, a sign that this country has money, has resources that could be used properly. Mm. You know, trillion, and it's a lot of money. And, and in fact, shout out to SARS for the collection. I mean, they've collected a record uh, uh, amount of money. Uh, uh, yes, they, yes. They, they've, they've done well in the you know, last few years, mm. even before this current commission, even the previous commission. They've collected well. So SARS is doing its job mm. in collection. They can improve, but they are doing an excellent job mm. and in, in the revenue collection. But w when I look at the budget speech and the allocation of the budget, you know what was my biggest one? What came when people were excited and everybody yes. wants a bunch of it? Is that debt we are in? That budget speech for me, my biggest concern is that yes. this country debt is increasing year in year out. Mm, mm. And today, if you look at those debts, the monies we borrow from the World Bank, from the IMF, and so forth to fund our our own economy or mm. country, our own children, children that are born today. By the time they reach the age of majority and start to work and pay tax, they'll be paying the debt that me and you today, with this budget that we're excited about, will be paying back those loans. What are we not learning that we keep digging this hole? It's, it's look, our biggest challenge in the country is management of state enterprises. Sure. Uh, uh, the, the human resource capital, first mm, of all. The mm. people we place there, the people that get deployed by the ruling party or political organization, mm. and in some instances, the people that are being pushed to the throats 
of political office bearers by business. Mm. They are not there for the best interest of the country, but for maximizing profits. That's sure. the first element. The second mm. element is it is becoming clear day in, day out that state-owned enterprises are being mismanaged. Mm. If they managed for a number of years be before the 1994 you know, democracy down, they managed to succeed. The first five years of democracy, they managed to succeed, but it has been a downhill all the time. So it's mismanagement. That's one element. But the biggest element that is actually crippling Mm. The economy of this country and make services, you know, not to reach the internet people, it's sure. corruption. Yes. You know, uh, we, we have high levels of corruption and mm. it comes from top to bottom. Sure. Almost every second person is corrupt in this country in one way or the other. Mm. Some people may not even aware that they are part of the whole corruption mm. cycle and mm. process. And corruption is our biggest challenge. Otherwise, we wouldn't be spending this whole lot of money. Look at the money we spent on the commission of the, Z the Zondo Commission. Mm. You know, millions of, of rands, almost a billion, went into that commission to focus on corruption. What are the end results? What did we get out of it? I actually call it a circus and a mugosi, you know, mm. where people went and start talking to each other. And then when you look at the Zondo Commission, the other day I asked people, how many people mm. or politicians who are non-members of the ANC were, faced the, were facing the music of the Zondo Commission? And somebody said, actually, none. Mm. As if the DA and other political organizations, the EFF and the PS, and anybody in the of Freedom Party, as if their members are not corrupt. So you could see it was the internal battle there so of, you, so one, of one group of sure. ANC people against the other one, exposing each other. So are you, saying, are you saying generally within politics that everyone is eating at some level? At some level, look, I, I've been in government for long, you know, over 25 years in the public service yeah. and five years in, the, in, in between the private sector and international organizations. Le let me tell you, I've said it in one media platform mm. yesterday to say, even if you look at the lowest ranking person, a constable at a police station, even if he's not politically affiliated or aligned, mm. the fact that he will ask for cool drink mm. or, or a bribe or anything to can, you know, dismiss a docket or not to arrest you, that's where corruption starts. It mm. starts with us. Mm. It, but the problem is when the head is also rotten, when the leadership of the country is equally corrupt in one way or the other. Like, why should I listen to you? Yeah, when why, you, why should they listen to you? Everybody was looking at our at the moment. What should the average South African take away from the budget speech in as short as possible? Well, I, I, I think what they should take is that uh, at least at the moment some money has been set aside for infrastructure development. Yes. And, and I was a little bit more disappointed with uh, what has been allocated to the health sector and education. I had expected more. Mm. But infrastructure development, it looked good. Mm. Uh, uh, the other thing is the money in future that is going to bailing out SOEs. If things are done correctly in this OSA, SOEs, then we can use those resources to cover other things that we may do as a country. But in general, I don't think much has changed in the budget of the country compared mm, to the mm. other years. There's not much different. We are just spending more and, and doing less for the people. In fact, speaking of um, SOEs, um, um, ESCOM CEO, former CEO, Andre De Reiter, pretty much went whistleblower overnight the other day. Were you surprised? Well, uh, I, I had expected Andre Drake, and I've written quite a number of you know, articles about him since he joined. Yes. The, the, the. I'd expected him to fail, I must say that. Mm. I'd expected Drake to fail. He never succeeded in anything he had done before. So it was a shock that the country gave him a troubled S uh, SOE. Mm. Well, he's got a history. When you look at his CV, it's a history of failures. So for those, for those that don't know, what, mm. what is some of that history? Well, for example, he was at NAMPAC and he... he you know, ran the organization into almost bankruptcy. Mm. Uh, 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 everywhere he was, as a CEO, as an executive, he never succeeded. So you ask yourself... So he was never the right guy for the job? No, he was not the right guy for the job. But also, for him, to come back to your question, to, to check, did, was I surprised that he started singing? That yeah. surprised me. That mm. part, that as quickly as before he could even finish his term, because he was supposed to finish by March. Oh, uh, yes, the notice period. Uh, yes, the notice period. And, and then he started talking. I think when I, I, I really looked at that video that was removed from the, the system, mm. somebody from the U.S. actually sent it to me yesterday. So I've got the whole recording, and I kept on re-looking at it. Mm. I think, number one, and, and, and again, this is my view to your listeners and sure. viewers, I think it was staged. It was well planned. Mm. I, I even so looked, it's orchestrated. It was orchestrated. I yes. even looked at the body language of the interviewer or the anchor. Uh, you could see that those questions were planned, and he had to talk. It was orchestrated. And, and maybe Andre Reiter 
was was under pressure. He was in the wrong kitchen. You know, mm. maybe he didn't expect what he found there. Sure. We wish to sit here and he must talk more. Mm. But but what surprises is the way the ruling party of the ANC came back, guns blazing, to attack him, to give call us, him Give place. us names, you're a right winger. Uh, yeah, yo, yo, you're a right winger and, and, and being called. Again, he, he exposed himself also by saying uh, the ANC leaders are still thinking communism and Marxism and it's mm. not going to work. So anybody, obviously, who is criticizing the left will be seen as a right winger. Sure. But the timing, it, it, it really surprised many. So, so, for instance, he claims there's a high-ranking minister who told him, you know, we can fix things, but people must still be able to eat. Mm. Should he have spoken up at that stage? Do you believe that? Well, well if this guy is claiming to be not corrupt, yes. and he was not an associate to corrupt processes, mm. why is he still holding back? Why did he wait mm. until that interview to can raise those things to either his principles, sure. uh, depend, or otherwise who knows, he, he must most probably referring to his principal, that's why he couldn't raise it to him, but he could have called the press conference at that time. But something that people put a blind eye on with that interview, and they're not raising, is the director said, when he said those words to that minister, mm. there were other officials there, senior yes. officials. So they're witnesses. So they're witnesses. And mm. why are those officials silent? Why are they quiet? Why are sure. they not coming out? Uh, are they part of the whole you know, mm. process? Why are they not whistleblowing? Why don't they call their minister or their boss to order? Or expose them? Why mm. should the country sit here and say, director, give us the name who? There were other people who are there who sure. are said to be senior government officials. And they are silent up to this stage. You must ask yourself why. Now, there's also talk of how the ESCOM board chair is in a renewable energy business. He served on the board of NetBank uh, with President Ramaphosa. Um, uh, look, again, I'm not surprised with that process. And I don't know why would people look at the resume and business interest of the ESCOM chair mm. only now sure. instead of when they are appointed. You know, mm. when... when High caliber people are appointed in South Africa. I've made it my business to go and check their CV. What do they come from? What business are they in? Sure. Why do I do Is that? Is there any possible conflict of interest? Any possible conflict of interest? We all knew from the very beginning that he's into renewable energy. Mr. President Cyril Ramaphosa himself. He is into the business of renewable energy through his companies, even if he says he's no longer active in the companies. He yep. is. His brother in laws two brothers-in-laws and one phobic, they are in the renewable energy business. Now the chairperson of has come. Now, link the whole value chain. The CEO or the outgoing CEO of ESCOM mm. is being accused by the chairperson to say he was pushing the agenda of renewable energy instead or against the government one of balance between coal and renewable energy. Mm. So everybody in the helm of ESCOM is in the business one way or the other of renewable energy. And we expect those people to actually take care of our coal, you know, a lake to can do that. No, 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 no. It's very simple and people must apply in their mind. If mm. I'm in renewable energy and I'm being given an opportunity to use coal to supply energy, yeah. I will actually collapse the coal chain. In order I have no interest in the system working. I don't have interest in the system working. Mm. So my business is to make sure that alternative energy, whether it's solar, whether it's wind, mm. any other alternative system that I'm going to profit from mm. once I leave this chair will work. And, and, and for me, that makes more sense. It's more logical. I don't say it's correct. It makes more sense for a business person who is selling solar panels or intending to sell solar panels to collapse a business that is heading, that is depending on coal. Why would he go and recommend that coal must continue to be used mm. when he's got budget and a plan, business plan for sure. renewable energy? We're hanging out with political Botsang Mudimu Wame Mui. Loa, this is Wow, What a Week. This is Wow, What a Week. What a Week. The Ukraine war turns a year old today. Exactly. Learnings so far. Well, uh, you know, I've got personal interest in the in the in that war, and and I've been following it from day one. Are you, are you dating a Ukrainian? Uh, no, not oh, yet. Not okay. yet. Not okay. yet. Uh, look, I don't even call it the, the Russia-Ukraine war. Yeah. Uh, I call it the Russia-NATO war. Mm. for Ukraine, okay, over yes. Ukraine. Ukraine is a pie that is being fought for, mm. and everybody wants to do that. I, I, I said uh, a year ago, 
exactly when this war started, people said, uh, to, uh, uh, President Vladimir Putin is bluffing. He never expected it to go this far. And I said, he's not bluffing, he's going to do it. Mm. One, two, and I'll explain why I was saying he's not bluffing. And two, people thought it will not take this long. Now, anything that America or the USA is being compromised on in military terms, especially international war mm. you know, engagement, they will not let go until a place is completely destroyed because that's how the United States of America is making money. You go, you destroy, and they send American money to go and rebuild. Mm. So America will benefit from this the day it ends because they will have to go and bring companies with the British to go and rebuild Ukraine, and then mm. it will sponsor the economy. But, but let me go back to uh, what was... So is this like the, poli the politics of dependence? It's the politics of dependency. We, yeah. we, we knew that Russia will destroy U Ukraine. Sure. We knew that these four or five superpowers involved there, they will not shoot at missiles at each other. But I, I was going to say, though, how does it make sense that... And, 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 and I guess it also confirms what we've always said, that when superpowers do what the hell they want, they get away with it. How does it make sense that... There's a war in 2022, 2023. Well, because the, uh, 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 the, the economies of these superpowers depend on wars, sure. depend on military. Mm. And, and that's how they make money. That's how they become a superpower. And, mm. and, and again, you're correctly asking the right question. Why at this age do we have you know, wars over a country when that country was sitting there at peace? But, but if you know what was the real cause of this war, mm. it was... Remember that Russia had a, a applied to be a member of NATO, sure. the North Atlantic, you know, uh, treaty organization. Treaty organization. Yes. And they were rejected. They were refused. Mm. Now, Ukraine was in the process of doing that. While they're in the process of doing that, the USA, supported by France and the Great Britain, they started putting missiles or taking short-range missiles into Ukraine along the borderline with Russia, facing Russia. Mm. Now, that's a threat. And, sure. and, and there was an agreement in 2013. There was an agreement between those countries and, and the Federative Republic of Russia to say, guys, don't bring those missiles anywhere don't near my borders. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do that. We yeah. are not in that. Don't start this. They went against that agreement, mm. the NATO countries, and they brought missiles in. Now, did you expect uh, Vladimir Putin and his people to sit and watch when they are doing that? And that was the nucleus of the whole thing. Ukraine gave them a platform. Like now, there's talks. In, in Sadak region, Botswana next door, mm. in the eastern uh, part of the continent, the, 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 the Horn, America has bases there. America has bases in Botswana, whether people hide it or not. Mm. They've got mm. a military base in Botswana. And you ask yourself, why would the USA have a military base in a peaceful country mm. like Botswana that you know, doesn't have an army in true sense mm. and, and it's not threatening anybody around? So if you look at the neighboring countries of Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, uh, they, they are not a threat to Botswana. So mm. why would the U.S. come and establish their military base in Botswana? So why do you think they did that? Look, I think it's, it's, uh, it has been there for many years, and I think it is because they want to assert mm. their presence that in we're the here. continent. Mm. That we are here, we are mm. also present. The, the, the African relationship with the East Bloc, sure. Russia, China, and other Eastern countries, has improved in the last few years. Mm. And that improvement of those relationships mainly economically and for trade purposes. It's a threat to the USA. And mm. they, what else can they do if they don't bring the military for their presence to be felt? And to say to Russia and other countries, we are watching you, we are here. Now, South Africa having war games and military drills with Russia, for instance, you know, friends with China. Obviously, America is not happy. Yeah. America, who happens to be, you know, easily our biggest trading partner. How do we navigate that from a diplomacy point of view? Because we've, ne we've not necessarily said we support Russia, mm -hmm. but you know, our silence regarding the whole situation almost implies that Russia is our friend, leave us alone. Yeah. What is it about our politicians that they can't say, like Madiba did when he did his US tour, mm -hmm. that don't tell me about Castro. Castro was my friend when you were not my friend. Yeah. So Castro will be my friend. Why are we unable to say... Russia is our friend. 
and well, we're, and we're siding with Africa. I mean, does the world of diplomacy not allow for that? No, the, the world of diplomacy allows, uh, and, and but first of all, before you get into diplomatic relations yes. and engagement, you are a sovereign state. Mm. So the first thing you do when you become a diplomat and represent a country, or you participate in diplomatic circles, is to defend and protect your sovereignty as a country. Sure. So your position, Americans are not afraid to tell us understand to do that. But mm. South Africa has not really been silent. It has been sitting on the fence. Yes. They were not silent, but they've been saying, let us resolve this situation in Ukraine uh, 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 through diplomatic channels, and it, which, is, which I think is correct and it's okay. Sure. But at the moment, I don't think South Africa has done badly in not listening to the noise mm. made by the West. Mm. By America. Mm. I don't think they've done it. This exercise that people call games, you know, uh, some of us who have been in the military, we know how important it is. Mm. It's not new. It has been happening. We have done it with the same USA that is telling us today mm. that we should not enter into naval military exercises with Russia because they are in a war with, with Ukraine. Mm. But we are not in a war with Ukraine. We are friends with Russia, mm. and we have been friends with Russia long before, you know, the liberation of the country or the pro-democracy. We have been friends with Russia. And, so and why are we not apologetic about that then? This, I, 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 that's the part of the silence that I don't like about our country. We should be able to stand up and, and, and not apologize and say, but we are friends with Russia historically. Mm. We have bilateral relations with, with the, uh, Russia, but we also have multilateral relations with Russia in the form of BRICS bloc. Sure. I, I know people are saying it's an economic bloc, but we, what other relationship do we have with the U.S. except being economically related mm, and diplomatically? Mm. It's an economic block with various interests. So this exercise uh, that is happening in our coastal line, in the, it was planned long before. You know, it takes years to plan such a military exercise. It was planned long before the war. So mm. are, the, are the West simply saying they want to dictate to South Africa that we should not enter into such military exercise? While, very mm. important, we went into various military exercises with the USA mm. when they were occupying Libya, yes. when they were destroying Iraq, when mm. they were destroying, when they were in Afghanistan. We went into military exercises with them, mm. and it was okay. Nobody mm. made noise. Mm. Now we should stop you know, our military when it suits them. When it suits them. And mm. I think South Africa must put its foot down. I had to wish you know, President Ramaphosa would stand up and tell America the way Trump told the world, mm. back off, leave us alone. We're putting this wall against Mexico. This is my country. I'm protecting it. Mm. We should be able to do that in a diplomatic way, but in a very firm way. Yeah. Like they say, diplomacy is telling someone to go to hell in such a way that they look in forward to the In a nicer way. Yes, exactly. E exactly. So we need to learn that. We should, we should. I think we know how to do it, but we are just, you know, uh, bang. We are scared of approaching the big guns. Yes. But the world is changing. The world order is changing. Absolutely. And I think us being aligned more to the East, mm. India, China, Russia, it will benefit this country much more than the historical colonial and imperial relationship mm. we have mm. been having with the USA. There's much more future benefits. Let, let, let me remind South Africa what happened and people went silent about it. During the middle of the Ukraine war, Russia offered us oil mm. and said they will even help us establish refineries. That would have made our price of fuel to be half today if we would have accepted that offer. Mm. Why is everybody quiet about it? Why didn't the government accept that offer from Putin? I don't know. Mm. But meanwhile, America was rekindling relations with nations they were not friends with so they could get oil. Exactly. Exactly. That's what they would do you know, to survive. They've done that. I mean... After the, 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 the collapse of, you know, the supplies in Libya, the oil countries in, in the Middle East, they started, you know, uh, building and improving their relationship with them so they can get oil, so yes. they could survive. Mm. That's why so far they survived, you know, the winter and the battle and the war because it's mm. affecting them, you know, the cutting of the pipelines sure. to Germany and gas pipelines and so on. It is affecting them, but they are surviving because they rekindled the relationship between countries that were a little bit hostile to them. Mm. And they are refusing us to that while there's no hostility mm. between China, South Africa, India, and, 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 and Russia. There's no hostility. <sighs> Let's bring it uh, closer to home. Um, activist uh, Zaki Ahmad says he will stand for parliament in 2024. Yes. And, and, and if I'm not mistaken, the electoral amendment bill has just been submitted or handed in. Well, look, what's the process? What happens? Well, it, it is still a bill at the still moment. A bill, it's yes. not an act of parliament. So yes. it must go through parliamentary processes. Look, do I, you I, think it will be stalled I, got, until after the elections, or do you think it will go through? Knowing government processes, and, yeah. and I was part of a few government bills that, that, that went through a post act, it takes at least five years. I know this bill did not start being developed now. 
uh, it's the submission, it must still go to the National Council of Provinces, it must go to National Assembly mm. and come back and debate it. I don't think, you know, 2024, it's, 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 it's now. It's now. Mm. I don't think... So there's no way of fast-tracking it? There, is, there are ways of fast-tracking, especially mm. that there's been debates, there's been court, you know, uh, rulings regarding mm. changing of the Electoral Act. It can be fast-tracked, but... And, and in fact, I think a two-year deadline was given, which was yes, missed. It was missed, yes. again. And there's no repercussions. Sure. You understand? And, but remember who are the people who are pushing this mainly, mm. despite a, a, a small fry like Mr. Ahmad. The political parties like DA and so forth who were pushing for this. Mm. However, it's a threat to them now. Mm. Once, once independent political candidates comes in to can contest, where will they get the voters? They are going to chow and cut yes. from these political parties, which mm. will weaken the, 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 the bigger parties. You know, yep. people are already tired. People also in South Africa are saying we are tired of being imposed. Or being given, imposed a president, we yeah, want to vote you, you, for our you, own president. You send what three, four thousand uh, delegates to a conference, and they decide our president. Yeah, exactly. In in, in that event, actually, it's even less. That's the day they decide their president. That yeah. president goes to parliament, which has approximately four hundred people, mm. and four hundred people are going to sit there and decide who's going to be the president of the republic. Now, the voter is saying, "Can't we vote for both?" Yeah, because I'm being de de disenfranchised. E exactly. Yeah. But but again, fresh. When you look at politics, uh, party politics in South Africa, I don't think it will make much of a difference mm. if a person. And let's look at City of Joburg. The mayor yes. comes from a, you know a very small party. Mm. He won't rattle a lot of feathers. It, 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 whereas the president will choose his own cabinet. But mm. if you are independent, you don't have a political party gunning against you. In Parliament, those political parties, even if you are voted and you get the most votes as a president, mm. but you don't have the support of MPs. You don't have a constituency. You don't have a constituency. Yeah. So it, we, we have to seriously relook at our electoral uh, system, especially that we are a big country and our politics have developed now. It's almost 30 years we are into this politics. Sure. They have developed. I think we must, we must change. We must move with what is happening mm. in the world. In fact, uh, speaking of uh, the electoral amendment bill, uh, in closing, uh, Botsang Muilo is a benevolent dictator, if ever there was, because they always lose their way along the way. So you are a benevolent dictator for a year. What do you change immediately? In fact, many argue that President Ramaphosa often suffers analysis paralysis because he consults so widely. Some things that should happen now don't because he's consulting. One and is his consulting at the level that he does is that a bad or a good thing? Look, there's nothing wrong in consulting. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a good thing if you sure. are a democratic leader. But, sure. but you are not a leader of consultations. Sure. One of the character traits of a good leader is that you must be decisive. Mm. You must make decisions, sure. wrong or right. Mm. And it doesn't end there. Mm. You must account for the decisions that you have made. Sure. And, and, but he's a very indecisive president. Mm. I, haven't, I haven't seen one thing in the last, it's been four years now, that uh, uh, Mr. Ramaphosa is in power. I haven't seen him making a critical decision immediately where it was needed. Mm, mm. You know, uh, uh, and, and that's very worrying. Uh, it's okay to consult, but be decisive as the leader. Mm. You know, you are guided by what? By the policies sure. and the events in the country. Mm. So, so you must be able to make decisions while you are sitting. If you put me in that position in this country, the very first thing. But uh, like I said, so you're a benevolent uh, dictator. Well, uh, you have uh, a year. What are you fixing? The, the, the biggest problem in South Africa in between unemployment and the next thing is security. Mm. The first thing I will do mm. is to make people feel safe in their own homes. How do you do their that? Country. We have a military mm. that when it suits the government, it uses them. It kicks, kicks and thunder people during lockdown. Some, Even, some died. Some died, mm. you understand? So it shows what our military is capable of doing. Mm. We were sitting since between last week, Thursday, and today, it's mm. exactly seven days. There has been 13 cash in transit mm. in the country. Mm. 13 mm. in total. Now, we have a military that's sitting in the barracks that we know their capabilities. Mm. If it goes to a push, we know that their duty is not to enforce the law of the police, but sure. we've got a state of emergency mm. that crime has gone out of hand. Yeah. If my kids and my woman and my neighbors and my dogs can feel safe with a soldier standing with a rifle at every corner of the street. So be Let it, it be. Mm. Let it be. And that's one thing I will focus on. Okay. Security. Once we have security, focus on not praying for jobs, guys. Mm. We, we can't be praying for jobs. Sure. I mean, where have you seen jobs for you? I mean, we have to come with policies and mm. plans 
on how we are going to help these youth. And I hear people are saying, youth unemployment, why do we want the 18 year olds and the 20 year olds employed mm. when we can keep them busy mm. with many other activities, sure. sporting activities, sporting ground, and, and ambas, you know, where mm. people can go and we teach them trade, brick laying, mm. things that we need mm. in the country at the moment. We don't need lawyers and doctors more than we need technicians and technical sure. people. Mm. So w that's what we should be doing, invest in education, empower the youth. In, in, fa in fact, even for instance with, um, if I need anything fixed at my house, if I need an electrician, if I need a plumber, more often than not, if I pick up a phone to call, it's either a middle-aged or much older Africans man, Absolutely. or it's a Zimbabwean, Absolutely. or it's a Malawian that answers the phone. Absolutely. I've never once called for a plumber or an electrician and a South African answered the phone. I, I have actually went to an extent of saying to you know, the insurance when my geezer based as recently yeah. as two months back, please make sure that the company you send here is black. Mm. Understand? And, and I need a black technician to come and do that because sure. they are there. But the skills are very limited. Mm. Let, let me quickly tell you what, what actually happened. The African government, the apartheid regime, mm. invested a lot in technical uh, expertise. Yes. And when black people took over management position in government departments and municipalities, those people based on race mm. and not accepting a black person to be the boss, they pulled out. Mm. But you know what they did? They pulled out with municipal plans. Sure. Where is the cabling? Where mm. is the infrastructure? How they do I maintain that them. bridge? How do I maintain that bridge? So they are sitting with the blueprint mm. of how the country is that is Is out. that not illegal? It is illegal, mm. but they've done it within the legal parameter. We didn't pay attention to that. Okay. We paid attention in sitting in a government office with a tie and saying, I'm now Makulu Baz, I work for government. We didn't think at that time when the theft and the looting of government records happened. Now what they are doing is, if you look at when as the intrusion, and when, when there's also electrical gems or a cable has been stolen or what, guess what, who's fixing that? Mm. The same former employees of municipalities are being called and contracted by that municipality to come and fix those cables, to come and render that service. If it has to be in the township, then they pick up few black guys, mainly of foreign origin, to go and do that job as subcontractors. Mm, mm. And, and that's where we also drop the ball. Sure. So that when we took, we actually to inherited an empty shell when mm. we took over the government. We inherited the union building and the offices and the blocks and the positions. And, and none of the banks. And, uh, oh no, <laughs> the banks we must forget. Anyway, the government never owned the bank. The government never even owned the reserve bank and we still do not own the reserve bank in South Africa. Sure. It's called the Reserve Bank of the Republic, but it's owned by shareholders of which, between me and you, mm. the majority are foreign and it's a German family that has the majority shares in the South African Reserve Bank. Wild. But, 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 but isn't that what the formula is though, um, wh when it comes to um, fighting for independence? That will give you the parliament, but you can't touch the banks. Well, we accepted it. We should have not accepted that. Yeah. We should have not accepted it. Oh, oh, we should have came with a state bank. Mm. If they don't want to keep their bank, then we should, okay, keep your banks. Yeah. You know, your five major uh, commercial banks. This reserve bank, we are going to change the laws. Remember, you have the power. Mm. MPs, and people don't understand that. People in parliament are not just MPs howling at each other. Sure. Those are lawmakers. Those mm. people make laws. The ANC has been having over 200 MPs. Mm. If they were serious about changing the law, they should have changed the law of the Reserve Bank at least within the five years of being in power. It has been how many now? 28 years. They still haven't changed the Reserve Bank law. And, and you can see that they are not serious. But again, uh, uh, they say everybody has a price. Our politicians have a price. I don't understand if we had such good ministers of finance in inverted commas, how come in the governors of the Reserve Bank, the former governor became a minister of finance as recent as now, and they still do not see anything wrong in the system and the financial policies of the country that mm. could act in benefiting the people. If we had a, a central development bank of the country, sure. people who are middle income earners who don't qualify for, for free houses or what they call RDP houses, mm. they don't qualify for bonds from commercial banks. That development bank, that central bank mm. was going to be the source of helping the majority of people who are stuck in the middle who are stuck in the middle yeah no one will touch them yes. no exactly mm. so this, this is the purpose this is what that bank will do we are a development so would this be part of your presidency uh, absolutely <laughs> the central <laughs> bank and the state-owned <laughs> bank will be one of the first things i do and wrapping it up what else is broken that you'd fix as a benevolent dictator 
Look, I, I, I think the moral fiber of the public service, mm. uh, if we don't fix that, if we don't talk, I was giving a lecture to one. But how do you fix that? We must go back to basics. Uh, if, if you don't teach uh, your son who's at a, at a young age or at a development age as a teenager to say stealing and taking bribes, buying your question papers, giving a school teacher for that, you know, we must start that. The moral fiber, we must mm. start to teach but, but how do, but ethics. How, but ethics. How, do we, how do we police that, though? Look, look policing is there yeah. in this country. There's mm. rules, mm. clear rules. Mm. There's, there's repercussions. There's written, you know, directives and so on. What we need to do is to start jailing people. I was going to say... If we, we don't jail people, we, if we don't arrest, prosecute and jail within a good time frame. Yes. This thing of a person being suspended, sitting at home for two years while waiting for his hearing at work and any mm. like it's absolute nonsense. People yeah, we must in, follow procedure. Oh, we must do, yeah. Procedure must be followed, but once procedure becomes prolonged, it becomes unreasonable. Yes. And it actually defeats the intended purpose. Mm. Somebody sits at home, he's on a five-year contract, gets suspended after one year, sits at home for three years earning a salary, is found guilty on the last year, and bye-bye, go home, and you've mm. been earning a salary all along. There's no repercussions, but there's been a case now in KZN, mm. a very important case where... A court has ruled that a person was wrongly appointed in a position because mm -hmm. the person lied, and now they must pay back the salary that they earned while the investigation. I think, I think it's a good it's start. A, it's a good start, but we must also start saying, people who do wrong towards the state, they must pay from their pocket, and they must go to jail also. The problem is our jails. I think they are immune to, to putting orange overalls on politicians. These people must start going to jail. Yeah. And that's the problem. We, we must prosecute to go to jail, not to just dismiss. Mm. If you have stolen, if you have looted from the state coffers, you must not just be dismissed from that position and then you take your loot and you go and you start a business. Mm. No, no, no. You must actually, the but, asset for future unit must step But is, I was going to say, isn't the SIU on a good, um, you know? It, it's very slow. Look, yeah. and it was not given uh, what it was supposed to do for me. It's only now it's starting. But it's very slow and it's taking long. First, if I steal 10 million from my employer at a moment and you are going to prosecute me after five years, I would have charged that 10 million and paid several prison orders so that when I'm there, I'm being taken care of and I get mm. parole after two years. You sure. know so we must also change our law, our criminal law, in dealing with corruption as a crime. Mm. Uh, corruption kills people. If you are, a, if you are a, a hospital manager and you sell an oxygen machine and you benefit from that and 10 people die in that hospital because mm. of the absence of that machine, you have actually murdered those people. Absolutely. We must start looking at it in that direction to say what were the results and the consequences of a person committing mm. corruption. And we should look like, like the, 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 the road you know, uh, accidents. South Africa has the highest road fatalities in the world, mm. in the whole world. Mm. I can tell you between the 1st of April to, uh, 20, 2010, to the 31st of March 2018, 92,000 people died on our roads. Mm. And those are the people that could be accounted, sure. they could be seen. Now, you drink and you get into the road and you kill a person. That should be, you should be charged for murder, mm. despite that you, you must... Because you knew, I'm drunk, now you're I'm you're driving, not supposed to I might that. kill someone. Yes, so, so these are some of the things we must do, and we must implement that to politicians. It must not only be implemented mm. to drinking drivers and so forth. So you'd be a president of consequences and repercussions, is what you're saying? And that's what we should do. In fact, I can see your slogan already, Butsang Mudimu Wame Muilwa. F around and find out. <laughs> well, and, uh, unfortunately, I don't have intentions to go into politics, and it's too late. I don't like people in their 50s going into politics. Yes. Uh, 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 your, your viewers and listeners may think I'm young. I'm, I'm, I'm above 50, so I'm at that level. So mm. I think we should let this country be ruled and governed by educated, well vested, energetic people in their young age. In America, Obama became the president at 44. In South Africa, the ANC says we have deployed young people like uh, Fiki Lembalula mm. and, and who are in their 50s. Mm. What is young? And our age of retirement is 65. Sure. I don't say all people must not work and their wisdom is not needed. Mm. I'm simply saying why are we investing over 70% of political office bearers in people who are over 70 years of in age? In fact, in people who in any other industry would be retired exactly. and told go home. Exactly. I mean, today we, we have a, a, a minister of education who's on retirement age, is busy developing and leading policies of developing education for you who are 16 and 17. Mm. We know who think way beyond even me and you. 
And we shouldn't do that. A mixture. And, and the world has proved that Rwanda is mm. an example. Mm. In Rwanda, they are sitting with a cabinet minister who is 32 years old. A very young ministers also. Very young ministers mm. as a whole. And I think we can go that direction as a country. We need to change it. Cater deployment, it's okay. Mm. It's happening all over the world. However, we should deploy young, you know, competent people into political offices. Then we'll start seeing direction. The country. My cabinet will be half of the cabinet of South Africa, and, and more than half of my cabinet will be people below the age of 50. That's where we should be going. But dissenting voices would not disappear. Well, they will not, <laughs> but uh, 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 we are stuck with them, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, listen, brother man, uh, nothing but love and respect for the way you view the country, the way you view things. Um, you don't always toe the line, and that's what I appreciate about you. Um, that you say what needs to be said, you say sometimes what a lot of people are thinking but are scared to say. I don't know why people are scared, but uh, if we don't tell the truth, I sleep peacefully because mm. I know I tell the truth, but it's also for my kids. Absolutely. Uh, I always say to my kids, one day people will question, what did your dad do? Who hey. was in where, hey, where was your dad? Where, where was, was your dad? dad? And yeah. my kids will stand up and say, come, let me show you. Come watch. Uh, come wow, watch. what a week. What did he say? Yes. You know, uh, wow, what a week is one of the platforms that has been created. And I think... It's, it's, it's in the right direction. Sure. Let's hear black voices. Let's, let's help the government to shape the direction mm. of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, former freedom fighter, former married man turned political, make some noise for Botsang Mudimowami Muilo. Brother, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you very much, and thanks to your viewers. Thanks for checking out Wow, What a Week, part of the Africa Podcast Network. You can reach us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. And also remember, one randomly selected subscriber on YouTube will win a cabin for two on our old ship cruise setting sail in December. Winner will be announced on Friday the 3rd, flights to Durban not included. This has been a live recording from Amped Studios. Shout out to Amped Studio, uh, the cast, the crew, all of the staff. You guys are incredible. Uh, the Africa Podcast Network, Pezulu Works for the cinematography, our guest Eugene Koza, Oskido Butsa Mudimuame Muilwa, uh, DJs Boo, and creative director Kuvesh Mohan, and our show producer Kelezo Mutisa King. We are done. We'll be back in exactly a week. Have a great weekend and a great beginning of next week in spite of yourselves. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week.